For more on Afghanistan's election, we are joined by Eric Bjorland, the co-founder of Democracy International, an organization that helps developing countries conduct elections. Mr. Bjorland has just returned from monitoring the vote in Afghanistan. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. How difficult was it to conduct this election, and how difficult was it for your group to monitor it? Well, it was extremely difficult to do both. It was uh, very difficult to organize an election in a time of war, and given the level of violence and the threat of violence, it was, it was very difficult for election officials to organize the polls in many parts of the country and for voters to turn out. And by the same token, it was very difficult for us to organize election observation in this kind of a security environment. What is exactly election observation? I mean, what would you do? How did you operate? We brought a large number of uh, international uh, experts on elections and on Afghanistan to Afghanistan and deployed them around the country to observe the process and learn about what's going on at a local level. This included long-term observers that were there for a number of weeks beginning in July and short-term observers that arrived in the days before the election and spread out around the country, joining in some cases the long-term observers. And they collected information from local officials and learned about the, uh, learned about the process, bringing their own expertise uh, to, to what, they could, what kind of information they could gather. Well, we heard a lot of reports of fraud. We also heard of threats of violence. What kind of problems did you observe? Well, uh, it's hard to say. I, I think that it's too soon for us to be judging this, this election. Um, there were administrative problems reported in parts of the country, but we don't think that those uh, were anything uh, different from we've seen, what we've seen in other countries and don't by themselves uh, threaten the credibility of the vote. Uh, there were really two different elections. In parts of the country, not much of an election was able to take place because of the threat of violence. And there have been allegations of fraud in those places, and I think we need to wait to let the uh, international, uh, the, the Independent Election Commission and the Electoral Complaints Commission uh, complete the vote count and investigate those allegations. Did you or anyone in your group witness something firsthand? We witnessed low turnout in some places, and we, of course, witnessed problems, but uh, we still need to wait in order to see how systematic and widespread those problems were. Given the difficulties of holding this first round of voting, if it's necessary to have a second round, a runoff election, would that be even more difficult? Well, it could be. I, I mean, if there's going to be a second round because neither candidate won 50 percent of the vote, uh, there will probably be less focus on the problems of this election. But it does raise the stakes for the next round and, and makes it important to get in place some checks that were not in the first round. Uh, one thing is some kind of uh, faster uh, release of partial results from the Independent Election Commission. And we would encourage uh, independent groups, per perhaps the Domestic Election Monitoring Group in Afghanistan, to organize its own parallel vote tabulation to collect the results independently from a sample of uh, polling stations in order to provide some um, integrity, to, to provide some verification of the vote count. Eric Bjorland, just back from monitoring the vote in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Thank you.